So you guys are hot. Yeah, I agree. Me too. You guys? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm absolutely. I mean, uh, <laughs> I'm he, he's one yeah, of the top Japanese players uh, to ever play the game, they say. Uh, Yamamoto Yoshi is Yamamoto. a 25-year-old, uh-huh. and he's considered one of Japan's top pitchers. He's currently linked with the New York Mets as being a free agent pitcher that the Diamondbacks may be all in for this next season. He is, I mean, if you, if you look at what he has accomplished in the uh, last few years uh, for the Buffaloes, who he plays for in the professional baseball league over there, right now he is uh, he's at a 1.48 ERA, a 0.8525 whip, a 8.52 whip. Uh, he has 125 strikeouts over 122 innings. He's only walked six batters. That's... 1.2 walks per nine inning. He has a fastball around 95. He also has a splitter, a cutter, a curveball. Uh, he has won the Pacific League MVP twice, two gold gloves, five all-stars. He has won the, I don't even know how to say it, but it's the Japanese version of the Cy Young Award twice. Go all in with this guy. All in. Put, put your chips in the middle of that, uh, that table. He Cash pitched in. in the uh, Baseball World League. He was in the World Classic. He pitched for the – he was in the Summer Olympics in 2020 in Tokyo. Uh, it was WBSC Premier 12. He's been that. It, again, I mentioned the World Baseball Classic. But, you know, I'm watching some of the highlights of him, and you're saying to yourself, wow. Now, it's a $200 million contract demand. Whoa. I, I, Oh, by the way. Oh, by the way. Oh, yeah, 200 million bucks. Otani money? That could be a problem. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Especially for Ken Kendrick, the managing general partner of the Diamondbacks. As soon as you drop that number out, everybody went, well, that's not going to happen. You know, Rock, as you said this, and you're rattling off all his stats. I'm like, he's out of the market for the Diamondbacks. I'm like, you, yeah, but. They but is he? That. Well, I mean, we don't know. But I'd love to see I mean, it. You put him in a rotation with Zach Gowan and, and Merrill Kelly. And I think we're seeing some 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 good stuff out of uh, Brandon Fat. I mean, he's emerged as a solid well, third starter. Not as if they don't pay; they paid Granky, they paid Mad Bum. Not as if the money they won't pay him. But if he's looking for thirty, thirty-five, forty a year, that might be heartburn for the uh, for the Diamondbacks. I'm like you; if you can afford him, he's a kid. They'll come over, get good ten solid years out of him if he can. And then, but here's the other thing: you look at Zach Gallon. His contract's coming due. You're going to have to pay him right. to the tune of – he's one of the top pitchers in the major leagues to the tune of $35 million a year. So if you go out to this kid, you bring him on board, he's making – if he's demanding 25 to 30, and then you got Gallon, mm -hmm. and then Merrill Kelly, as well as he's pitching, he's going to want his cash. How long do we still have to pay uh, Bumgardner? Is it at the end of this season or is uh, it next season? Couldn't tell you. Not sure. I think they're just finally paying off Grinke, to tell you the truth. Oh, I think you're right about yeah, that. Yeah, but I mean, it, but you got to think of what you're looking at. For this your... kid's a stud. Yeah. yeah. You know, watching some of his highlights and no clue what they're saying. I think we have some English sound. Uh, why, don't you, why don't you fire that off, Connor? Well, we'll understand this so you can hear how we say trigger. his name. Yamamoto. Yamamoto. Strikes out Wingrove. He's got four through two innings. World Baseball Classic. And he strikes out swinging. It's two in a row, five overall for Yoshinobu Yamamoto. How do you say it? Yoshinobu, Yoshinobu. Yamamoto. Yamamoto. There's no way. Yoshinobu. Yoshinobu. I have to, say, like, I have to really practice that <laughs> for a while. Actually, it, actually, it rolls out pretty simple. I, I just, you know, I look at these numbers. Okay, it is, it's it's Japanese baseball, but that Pacific Coast League is pretty high. Yeah. Probably maybe equivalent to yep. Triple A. Yep. Um, he gave up eighty-two walks combined in two seasons. That's truly a remarkable stat this day and age. And it really is. And think of the other the pitchers that have come through from Japan over the last 10, 12, 15 years have been have Darvish. Been, I mean, there's a bit of uh, Darvish, Tani. Tani. I mean, there's some pretty good ones. Dice, I mean, Dice K, Matt, Matsuyama. Yes, Matsuyama. yes. So, I mean, I mean, they're all proven. They all could come over and play. It's just a matter and, of. And don't you think if if the Diamondbacks can pull the money together and make this happen, 
they're going to make it up on wins, but they're also going to make it up on coverage. Coverage, win, Japanese three minutes. coverage that they're going to get. And, and going to the playoffs. And selling tons of merchandise. When you watch an Angels game, there is so much Japanese yeah. uh, merchandise uh, available to see when you're just watching on television. It pops up well, constantly. And that's one of the reasons why I think Artie Moreno is like, hey, look, from the marketing piece of Otani, kid's a superstar. You know, we don't want to lose that that marketplace with, with the Japanese Americans and having that. That's why I think they, they hesitate to trade him. So if this kid were to come to Phoenix, if, I mean, just think of that. I hope so. That, that, that marketplace. needs that. They need this. Well, that pitching would be paramount for them to, with the oh. talent they have hitting wise, to to make sure that I mean, they're in the hunt with the Dodgers every year. I think the D backs, the front office has done a good job this year getting the fan base re engaged again. Having the success, the fact that this current this team currently sits just a half game out of the final two nationally wild card spots, the attendance is up, two everything minutes. is going in their direction, very favorable. But they need to keep that consistency. They need to keep get that momentum going. And bringing in a guy like this or really signing a big free agent or something, they still have an identity crisis, I think. Unless we see Carroll and some of these young guys starting to do some TV commercials and doing some radio and, and really starting to see that like you see in other markets, they just never – they don't have that. You know what? They haven't had it – I don't know who's the last guy that – Really put these guys. They had an identity. It's probably got to go back to the one in two thousand and one with the World Series, because yeah. remember for a long time they were pushing Kirk Gibson. You know he was a skipper. Then they were pushing Tony Larusa, who was up in the. He was basically in the booth, right? And in the front office, and, and they tried to push Goldie, but Goldie didn't want any. Goldie part didn't of want that. it. He didn't want any part of that. It's not like they have to push somebody, no, but it'd be nice. But I mean, who, what jersey do you buy right now? Uh, probably either either uh, probably Corbin, 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 Carroll. Corbin Carroll. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think you look at that. I think because you really don't have much. You go to a giant game, and I got to tell you, man, that fan base, like them or not, you go to a giant game. Everybody's in giant gear. Yeah, they are. They are. Everybody. What was your last time you were a giant game? Uh, here. Nah, probably count. about five years ago, <laughs> but they were all gear. Wait, it, it, I love how you guys just like, yeah, you agree with me. I could say, you know, all uh, you got to do is watch it. I don't have to go to. A, I, I, I have a house in Yuma it. on the beach. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I've been there. It's great, Rock. <laughs> yeah, last time in San Fran, I was going to go wait in line for like a lottery to go to the game that night. So, but but when they're here, you're right. But I think if I think no, I'm the, talking about in San Francisco. No, I've not been to a game. I, if you go to a game here. Fans are wearing other jerseys. Yeah, but you I mean, see more of that there than you do Diamondback jerseys. But in, some, you, in if, some games, if you look at the the rotation, really, Merrill Kelly, Zach Gallon, and then the rest of them. Okay, maybe even by committee sometimes. But if you pick up a kid like this, it can be consistent, be like your third legitimate guy, and you can keep Kelly and Gallon, and have a guy like this year in year out basis, and keep those guys satisfied on your team. Then you, every year you're in the hunt for that National League West, if not for a wild card. Hey, we're out here at Twin Peaks in Tempe. Every Thursday, we're at a different location. They have five of them. Because they have five, we are giving away five 65-inch uh, TVs, big screen smart TVs this football season. We're also giving you an opportunity to win $5,000 in our fan pick em contest. Uh, both the promotion with the five TVs and the fan pick em are part of a, a partnership that we have this year with Blue Moon, Coors Light, and, of course, Twin Peaks. So, well, we're excited to get that going in the next few weeks as the football season will begin two weeks from tonight. But we got college football starting this weekend. 